новия Huawei P30 Pro. Променяме правилата на фотографията. Loredana Canata is an Italian actress who has worked with Paolo Sorrentino and has filmed in Bulgaria on a few occasions. The Sicily-born beauty impressed the audience as a jury member of the Cine Libri Film Festival next to Christophe Lambert and the fact that she sang in Bulgarian. And the first time I was here, it, it was 2001, um, a gentleman who was working with us, he was a music teacher, he gave me a little book with Bulgarian songs and uh, he teach me this. Бенвинута, София. Благодаря. Окей, да искам да ви интересен интервю. Аз пик италиан, аз пик българия. Окей, кул. Това ще бъде много кул. Аз съм много хвърлен, че имаме така лонг стендинг релейшншип с България. И мога да видя реал джой на ви бъдете тук. Когато ми казваме Италия, ми всички мисля в изкрепно синема. И за една причина. Аз мисля, че някои от най-добре Movies, the best directors, actors have come from Italian cinema. Um, why do you think, what impressed you in Italian cinema growing up and you wanted to be an actor? I think that uh, we had um, incredible uh, screenwriters and directors uh, who uh, were uh, great human beings who were able, you know, to Uh, to feel the times they were uh, facing, uh, they were hard times uh, uh, after Second World War. Irony uh, that they were able to put in such um, terrible times uh, uh, was the, the right mix to create something incredible. You've played in, in Paolo Sorrentino's Youth, yeah. which is an incredible film. How did you feel working with him? I, I felt honored and I was like, uh, I felt like uh, the little child I was dreaming of LA, Hollywood, the, the big um, cinema. I, during the shooting, I was me at seven year old saying, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> I knew already, you know, that uh, great actors are also often uh, wonderful people. So Harvey Keaton was very kind and very um, nice and everybody else. Speaking of Hollywood, uh, you've spent some time in Hollywood. Why, oh, why? why didn't you stay there? Well, um, I stayed there for three months and then I said, okay, I'll go back to Italy and I will come back here. But then uh, I was back to Italy and then I shoot at youth. Then I, I wanted to see what happened after. Then some personal stuff just started uh, going on, so I could not. But uh, it's also that uh, after you turn 40, Uh, it's so much more difficult to, to find a role, to find an interesting role. And uh, in Hollywood it's the same thing. And I don't look Italian, so I could not play Italian, Italian. roles. Yeah. I could, they told me, you can play Russians. And I might say that when I was here working uh, in Sofia, uh, so many times people came and Talk to me, spoke to me in Bulgarian. In Bulgarian. Yeah. And you do a lot of other work that maybe surpasses cinema even. Yes. As an activist, tell me more about that. Yes, uh, this is something which grew up with me. Um, I wanted to save the world when I was a little girl. Then I adjusted and, and said, I want to give my contribution to make this world a better place you said today and I was really impressed is that the most powerful thing is love 
and yeah. we rarely think about that because we take so many things for granted. Well, uh, I must say that... L'amore. It's, like, it's like the most beautiful word in Italian. <laughs> That's true. That's a beautiful word uh, in every language. And you know what? Um, all the problems we have come from lack of love. And the most important uh, uh, and dangerous lack of love is the lack of love for uh, um, ourselves. It, it could be, uh, it could sound selfish if it's not at all. Um, if you don't really love yourself, if you really, if you don't really uh, believe that you deserve love uh, and beauty, um, this will uh, cause uh, evil, uh, jealousy, um, uh, low self-esteem. Yeah. This is really the, the, the origin of, of all the bad things. Cine Libre is what brought you here. What would you say that impressed you? The Portuguese woman, yeah. Because um, as, as soon as I entered the style, I could feel um, a different time uh, where everything was slower, where days were so long and years were so long. Volte para trás. Isso era ensinar o caminho ao diabo. Erita Azevedo Gomes is a Portuguese filmmaker. Her movie, The Portuguese Woman, is a poetic and stunningly shot love story based on Robert Musil's book. We have to start with The Portuguese Woman. I mean, that movie is shot in such an amazing way and it tells such an emotional story. How did you decide to do it and why did you decide to do it exactly looking like this? Why did I decide to do it? Well, it was uh, uh, coming from um, several sources, if you want. Uh, I had uh, bought the book uh, years before in a book bookinist in Oporto because I, f I found uh, the cover very fancy. <laughs> it's an old book, so I buy it. But I, I didn't read it for years. It was in, in my place. And uh, once I was talking with Agustina Bessa Luis, uh, on the con in the conversation, the subject uh, Robert Musil came, and uh, it's all a mystery. And uh, things start getting together, and I, just, I wanted to make a film. Then it took a couple of years, this was around 2006, and I only made it now, so... Yeah. Be, between... Meanwhile, I made other films, but when I reread it uh, in the summer two years ago, uh, somehow the interpretation, let's say, that Agustina made of uh, Musil's text struck me, and uh, so I decided to to make it. I'm very, 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 very obsessive with all the details and what's in and the colors. Everything has a... A, a position, a meaning. A position and a reason to be yeah. there, you know. Yeah. That's the difficult part, is when you fall in love with some... I normally say there is a butterfly passing and you love it and you want to follow it. Then you have to think, what is the butterfly doing here? Do I need the butterfly? Will it add something? Does it have a place in the context of the film? Yeah. Of if not, you have to to put it away. That's very cool. So in the end, yes, I look for a certain uh, on my point of view of, of uh, a nice um, way of treating the the frame. Why did you decide to to become a filmmaker and tell stories? I didn't decide at all. The filmmaker decided for you. <laughs> it happened. It's no. It's. I don't know. It's the way uh, experiences and also, uh, obviously, I like uh, movies from yeah. from um, very early. This kind of fascination of uh, how does it happen? 
how does it happen that there is this? I remember when I was very young, like six, seven, eight, uh, in have uh, birthday parties like my cousin's birthday parties, and it was sometimes the great joy was was when the feast was screening films, yeah. uh, like the eight millimeter, yeah. um, Laurel and Hardy, Chaplin. And when uh, they, they put the lights out, we were all sitting on the floor. And that was the moment. And I was really, with the sound of the machine, tuk, 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 and watching these black and white things, it was really something that was uh, freezing me. Director Daniel Alfredson is one of the most respected names in Sweden. Son of the legendary actor and director Hans Alfredsson, Daniel is the one behind the two loved films based on Stig Larsson's Millennium book series. Now, the girl with the dragon tattoo will play with fire. I know many people who are I fans. Know, know. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit more about that process. Uh, to be honest, when, when I got to see these books, they weren't published at that point. So I got the manuscripts because I, uh, we had a connection with the publisher and so on. And they thought, well, they might be a TV series or a film or whatever. So I read it at, at a very early stage. But the books wasn't released at that point. So, and that was actually a good thing. I think we were, uh, it was when we were into uh, post-production, the books became immensely popular in Spain to begin with, and mm -hmm. France, mm -hmm. Italy, and then it started moving on. But we had already, already shot the whole thing. That's very cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually very happy about that because we did it as we, like to do it in, in Sweden and uh, there was no no other production company from another from from the US or so trying to, to yeah you were not impacted in any way by no. the, the success of the books while no, making the no movies. they weren't yeah and it's they, they were not successful when we started the project so I think that was a good thing for us can I ask you what you think of the Hollywood version? I've mm. just seen one of them. Yeah, the first uh, one. The first one. Uh, I think it's pretty okay, but I think this... Uh, I can't really see why you did that film. <laughs> That's my my opinion. Your father is a, was a huge star. He yeah. is a huge star still in Sweden. He's no, he's very, actually dead. I, I know, but he is yeah. a big name yeah, and a big a, star. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, he was actually in, in one of the movies, right? Yeah. In the Millennium. Yeah, it's, it's the last thing he did on, on, on film. That's incredible. So yeah. uh, how was it growing up in that type of family? And was he the reason that you pursued filmmaking? In a way, it must have been. But when I was around 19, 20, I was, the only thing I was certain of was not to work with film. That was my... But I, I couldn't really figure out what to do. Yeah. So I... Uh, had a plan to go to university and study history or something, but and then I got a job doing a documentary with someone, and then I got another job, and then I got another job, and then so suddenly <laughs> you're there. A lighthouse, that's quite something. I like to guide people. If they get too close, I turn the light off. Power things. He's just cheating on me. Daniel has been working together with Hollywood producer Rick Dugdale on another successful book series, Intrigo. Rick is also behind big productions such as No Ordinary Man with Ben Kingsley and his career begins with huge TV series such as The X-Files and Smallville. Love this region, so it's nice to be back, even though it is my first time in Bulgaria, as Daniel's calling me right the second. Is he really? Literally, yeah. <laughs> That's definitely Daniel He's answered calling. the call. That's definitely Daniel. <laughs> this will be funny. Look at that. Seriously. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> You know, I, I'm doing an interview right this second, and I said, watch, I told Daniel to call me, and I said, he's gonna call me right as we start the interview. And so we're doing this, inter this phone call on camera. 
Tell me how did your relationship with the Intrigo series begin? Well, uh, I've been reading a lot of Hockenesser's books over the years and I always liked him as a, as a, as a writer. And uh, me and my wife, we, uh, we found these short stories or short novels uh, in some of his collections and uh, we uh, found out that nobody had tried to make film out of them. Mm -hmm. So we uh, came in contact with, with Hocken and uh, later on we, we actually started writing the, the scripts. So. How easy or difficult it is to write with your wife? It's actually easier than you than I thought. No, we, we, we do really have a very good relationship when we write together. It's, it's a good thing. Intrigo is shot mainly, if not only in Eastern Europe. Tell me more about that and why Eastern Europe? So, I guess, yes, we shot in Belgium as well, which I guess technically is not Eastern Europe, but um, we shot Serbia, Slovenia, Croatia, and Belgium. We scouted uh, Montenegro, we looked at Macedonia a little bit, Albania, um, and so, you know, I did a film here, or there, in Serbia in 2000, 15 called An Ordinary Man with Ben Kingsley, with ben Kingsley which was about the Balkan War and, and uh, so that was something I spent a lot of time there and uh, looking at Intrigo and Daniel and I first started talking about it I said you know you should come look at this region while I'm here and so he did and we started putting the pieces together to uh, you know how to shoot it across multiple countries at the same time. We did a film together uh, called Blackway, based on a book. We did that in you know, a couple years prior to Intrigo, 2014, I think. That went to Venice Film Festival. Yes, yes, I opened it in Venice. Um, that was with Anthony Hopkins. And so that was uh, our first film that we worked together on. When I went to Serbia, he called me out of the blue and said, we have these three scripts ready for you to read. And you shot all three movies together, as in one after the other. Yeah, more or a, less, A yes. long shooting period, long a long shooting time. Period, yeah, it was a long period. In a way, it was harder and in a way easier. It was easier to, to uh, for, for instance, scouting locations. I could scout three, three films at the same time. You have quite a strong relationship with book adaptations. Why? I think two, two main reasons. One is, you know, originality. In today's world, any advantage you can get when you're going into the studios or the distributors to say, here's a book that sold a minimum of 50,000 copies that immediately has value going in. If, if you are a spec script and we have this actor attached, have a built-in following with a fan base of, you know, hopefully, you know, millions of copies sold, yeah. uh, I think, that's definitely an advantage. It makes your job easier. It's absolutely. <laughs> we haven't finished yet. It's better than that thing's lie. Are you sure you want to find her? Most people would have moved on by now. It's a weakness to be obsessed with the truth. We have to continue with our plan. I did not kill my husband. You are wanted for withholding information. How long have you been planning this? Spectacular twist. Novia Huawei P30 Pro. Promeniame pravilata na fotografijata.